So the Apple Unleashed event just wrapped up, and what we got was a lot. A new Apple Music plan based on Siri, new colors for the HomePod Mini, third generation's AirPods, and the grand finale with the completely redesigned MacBook Pros. So let's talk about these things and why our wallets are about to be a little bit lighter this month. But before we do, help out the channel, tap the like button, and subscribe for more videos exploring all things Apple. So let's get started with the most interesting product that was released today, the Apple Polishing Cloth. Actually, does anyone remember the old gray cleaning cloth that used to come with the Apple Cinema displays back in the day? Uh, those were actually pretty great. So I guess if you're looking for a $19 cleaning cloth, you can get one now. Okay, onto the real products, Apple Music. There's a new plan, $4.99 a month, Siri only though. You can listen using only Siri, but they've improved Siri so you can actually ask it for playlists based on your moods and occasions. And I feel like it's actually a great entry price that will get users in the door and they of course will feel the limitations of Siri and want to upgrade to the regular $9.99 plan for all the full features. And with this one, I'm getting a similar vibe to the iPod Shuffle from back in the day. Remember that one? The iPod Shuffle had no screens, sometimes no buttons, uh, but it helped you get into the iPod ecosystem. Once you're there, it's really warm and cozy and it's just so easy to go up a model. And with the Apple Siri plan, it feels suspiciously similar in that way. But a less cynical way to look at it, I guess, is also that the plan gives access to people for half the price. All right, HomePod Mini. We got three new colors, blue, yellow, and orange. Similar colors to the iMac, matching braided color cables, and a tint of the screen, which also matches the colors of the minis themselves. So not really much to say about this one, except I still miss the original HomePod. I love mine, and I wish they would create something bigger than the Mini. And then we got the AirPods 3. The last AirPods that we actually got on stage was back in 2016, and we finally got a newly designed baseline AirPods, and did you catch that? We got a modern remake of the dancing iPod commercials from back in the day. And it makes sense because AirPods are Apple's iPods of the 2020s. The design is similar to AirPods Pro. There is a noise canceling, but you do get spatial audio, which is this 3D sound effect that surrounds you. Before, only available on the AirPods Pro and Max. You also get improved dynamics to the custom driver, a shorter stem, and force press, which basically means no more tapping your ear, trying to pause your music, or activating Siri. There's also now MagSafe that's also built into these AirPods, and they actually updated the AirPods Pro case that also got updated with MagSafe. And then there's the battery life, which has been greatly improved to six hours of listening time. I'm super excited about this. I've tried all the AirPods and none of them fit me as well as the regular AirPods. So of course I immediately went out to pre-order these. And if you wanna see what I think once I get them in next week, make sure you tap subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on that video. Okay, on to the big one, the MacBook Pro. We finally got the redesigned MacBook Pro 14 inch and 16 inch, which is new, but in some ways kind of a throwback too. The new industrial design has softer curves and a thicker base. It actually reminds me of the old PowerBook G4. You know, you remember those? The 12-inch PowerBook was my first laptop, so I kind of get warm and fuzzy feelings about this one. And just like the PowerBook, the base of this MacBook Pro visually looks thicker because there isn't a bevel to help create the illusion of thinness. It's just a slab of rounded aluminum, which gives a very heavy and sturdy look. And on the sides, we have new or should I say newish, maybe old ports. We have an SD card slot, a Thunderbolt and HDMI on one side, and on the other side we have headphone, two Thunderbolts, and the return of MagSafe. Yes, it's back. And it's funny that MagSafe actually looks almost exactly the same as MagSafe 2, uh, just now with a braided cable and a new name, MagSafe 3. And on the inside, you get an all black keyboard, physical media keys instead of touch bar, and a notch. And at first, I didn't want to believe the rumors. I mean, how could they put a notch on a MacBook Pro, right? I mean, aren't we trying to get rid of this thing on the iPhone in the first place? And so, terrible design decision. Well, actually, you know, maybe not. Because what you get in return of the notch is a bigger display and tiny, tiny little bezels that goes more edge to edge. And because it's macOS, you can just set the menu bar to black 
and the notch basically disappears anyways. So the more and more I think about it, the less it actually bothers me. I don't think it'll actually cut into the content all that much, but we'll have to see. I do wish they would somehow engineer the camera and the sensors so that it will all fit in the bezels for future versions. Speaking of the camera, it's been upgraded to 1080p for all your FaceTime and Zoom calls, but no center stage and no Face ID yet. Oh, and the speakers and microphones? Huge improvement. Now with six speakers and 80% more bass and the microphone with 60% less noise. The current speakers on the 16-inch MacBook Pros are already amazing, so I can't really imagine what 80% more bass sounds like coming from a laptop. So Apple is clearly still leading the way when it comes to speakers on MacBooks. So one thing I didn't expect for the MacBook Pros is to get heavier and thicker, but it did. The 16-inch is now 4.7 pounds at 16.8 millimeters, and the 14-inch is now 3.5 pounds at 15.5 millimeters. Basically, each one grew by half a pound, or roughly half a pound, and it got a little thicker too. And I guess Apple prioritized performance and battery life over portability on this generation, but to be honest, I thought with the M1 chip, they could have at least the best of both worlds. And I wish it was a little lighter so that maybe there's less fumbling around at the airport TSA line. But I guess the weight might be worth the amazing battery life. This thing is looking like to be an all-day battery machine. The 14-inch will get 17 hours of video playback, and the 16-inch will get an unbelievable 21 hours of video playback. In terms of battery, these are more like iPads than they're actually like MacBook Pros. And coming from a 2018 MacBook Pro with just a few hours of battery life at best, this is seriously huge. And well, whichever MacBook Pro you choose, you'll get a version of the new M1 chip. And apparently we got it all wrong, everyone got it all wrong, it's not the M1X after all. Apple smartly decided to brand the two new chips, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. The M1 Pro goes up to a 10-core CPU and a 24-core GPU. The M1 Max also has a 10-core CPU, but a whopping 32-core GPU. And you can get it maxed out with 64 gigabytes of unified RAM and up to eight terabytes, eight terabytes of SSD. But if you do, this is definitely gonna cost you. But anyways, these things will be super fast, but I think most people coming from Intel MacBook Pros will be more than happy with the baseline 10-core M1 Pros. These are already faster than the M1 chips that we currently have, and I ordered mine in a mid-tier 16-inch, and I just can't wait. I've been waiting a long time to replace my 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro, and today, it's finally here. Okay, to wrap things up, this event sort of felt like a throwback to me. I feel like there were so many different little nods to Apple of the 2000s, and I already talked about how the Apple Music Siri plan feels like a modern version of the iPod Shuffle, and we actually got a modern version of the iPod commercial for the new AirPods, and we sort of, kinda, have a throwback design of the PowerBook G4. All that is to say, this felt like a real nod to Apple's glory days, and I'm okay with that. I feel like this is one of the most interesting events in a while. I'm super excited. I have the AirPods and MacBook Pros on order, so stay subscribed to the channel for an unboxing and a hands-on. <sighs> I've been waiting a long time for these products, so this is just a way for me to recap and give you my thoughts. If you enjoyed this, tap like, hit subscribe, and until we meet again, see you in the next one. Thank you.